Greetings, YouTubians, and welcome back to Wayne Sharp World, where it is that time of the week again. Monday, meaning another episode of Wayne Sharp Week, highlighting the knives that are going to be in my pocket for the next five days. Now, before I get into this list that I am very excited about, some excellent EDC knives, I want to thank you guys for tuning in today. If you like what you see, please do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button, follow along, and I will continue to bring you the content. And uh, also, a huge shout out here to all my sponsors, DLT Trading, Caviso, Mojave Outdoor, Steel Cap. Capital, White Mountain Knives, and of course, Blade Ops. Guys, look up all these retailers for your knife and EDC needs. They have a great selection at all their sites and provide a huge support to this channel right here, and I greatly appreciate that. Now, with that being said, let's get into the lineup this week, and we're going to get started off with one that I haven't carried in a little while, and it's one that every time I put it in my pocket, I forget just how much I like it and just how different it is. And this is the Giant Mouse Bronze Biblio. Now, yes, it's a Biblio, but the most important thing to know about this Bronze Biblio is just how wildly different it is compared to the Micarta version or the G10 version. You know, when this knife originally came out, it was nothing like this. Um, it had contoured G10 or uh, Micarta scales. There may have been a carbon fiber version as well. But it was completely different, wildly different. Um, the size was the same, but the action wasn't quite as good as this. The feel and hand was completely different. And the feel and hand on the original was good. But what you have here is just a completely premium version of an already amazing knife. The biggest difference for me outside of, I mean, obviously the materials and the micarta inlay is just phenomenal. It is literally flawless and excellently executed from every angle and aspect but the action the action on this knife if you have a regular biblio and you like it and you love it this is twice as good at least the action on this bronze biblio and i think that'll probably go i've also heard the same for like the titanium version or any other version with this type of handle uh construction with the flat uh some type of metal whether it be titanium or bronze or this is actually bronzo which is a little special thing i don't know all the details about it but it does add a little bit of weight it's a little heavier than titanium uh, but it just feels excellent in hand even without the contouring because these are flat scales but even without the contouring just the way it sits in your hand you got that jumping up there on the spine and a blade that is just ready to go in m390 these were manufactured by riot the pocket clip works excellently well and it's just a very classy piece i would definitely consider this a gentleman's knife um with great ergos and again just absolutely killer action whether you're middle finger flicking it or if you're just giving it the regular flip it flies out it's smooth it's excellent it's by far my favorite biblio and it's actually available right now which is not normally the case these have been pretty hard to come by it is available it will be of course linked below so that's knife number one for the week the giant mouse bronze biblio and let's move on to the next one which Maybe, in my opinion, the best Wii knife of the year so far. And this here is the Wii Beacon. And it's kind of ironic I'm saying that because of all the Wii knives this year, I think I may have been the harshest on this knife. But it was really just for one thing. It was the clip. And now this is not the clip it comes with. This is off a, uh, a Finch knife. I believe the Finch model 1920. Um, but this works great. The clip that comes with it is kind of the typical, like, Civivi-ish clip that's deep carry bent, and they made it in titanium and put it on, on the beacon. I didn't like that, um, so I changed the clip. But the knife itself, this beacon, um, so far, it is my favorite Wii knife of the year. There's been some really good models to come out, but the fuller that, that adds to the fidget factor and just how smooth... A ridiculously smooth blade and a decent sized blade coming at three and a half inches. Um, there's just a lot of things to love about this. The overall aesthetics from the knife being closed or open. The ergos, you got that little fullerish area up here to play with, kind of like what you have in the Elementum. Um, this is somewhat similar to like a large Elementum. It's it's actually very close to that. Just has a different uh, different grind. Doesn't have a hollow grind. Has a flat grind, um, but a nice thin edge. Excellent ergos, especially when you change that clip out. Like I said, this is from a Finch knife, and you, and there's all sorts of other clips you can get to put uh, to replace the uh, 
the, the bent over deep carry clip that they put on it. Um, but I love this knife. Um, there's very few Wii knives that I can say I truly love. Maybe three or four, and this is one of them. Just an excellent option. Um, you can still grab the black and titanium or the gray titanium handles. They are just fantastic. I believe they're coming in just under 200 bucks. Um, and of course, all premium. I believe this is 20 CV. Let's see here. Where is it hidden on this one? Yeah, here we go. Yeah, CPM 20 CV. So an excellent steel, an American steel. Good to go. Um, flipping action is just phenomenal on this. Love the flip a tab. Very smooth action. Very hard to go wrong with this one. The Wii Beacon. And I'm going to have to close this one because it's a little too long to set in the valet tray with, with it open. So there's that. And uh, next up, we have a Kaiser. This is the Kaiser Towser K. And while I do love pretty much the Towser K in general, I gotta say, this copper handle version, uh, for some reason, this particular model, this Towser K, really works with the, the copper handles for me. It adds a significant amount of weight, but it feels really good in your hand. And it really changes the action on this too. You gotta be careful because it's very, very smooth, but the sounds... Everything about it is just so, so good. You can middle finger flick it. You can, of course, thumb flick it. You still have that nice, slicey, kind of sheep's footy, worn cliff, just excellent blade with 154 cm. Um, now, these are in stock, and I got it linked, but when you go to Amazon, it's um, the actual copper version that you can buy. I believe it's $99. It says purple. It's not purple. That's an error on the listing of that knife. But if you click that the purple version, you look down, you'll see that it is the copper version, this exact version right here. And it, while all the Towser Ks really are great, you can't go wrong with any type, in my opinion. I really like this beefy handle on a bigger knife, which I don't always say, but this one here, it's just a winner. It's very, very good. Really enjoy it. Let's do it close. Just a, ooh, that metal tink. So, so good. Love middle finger flicking this on these excellent thumb studs. The Towser K is a phenomenal knife. I'm sure you guys have probably seen the review of it already. Um, if you haven't checked it, out, checked it out yet, it's definitely a Kaiser you want to check out. Good to go in just about every way. Uh, crazy smooth action, excellent aesthetics. The Kaiser Towser K, definitely in the pocket this week. Um, next up is Old Reliable. You guys have seen it before. It's nothing new. It's the Hoke Decca. Um, you just can't go wrong with this knife. American made 20 CV, solid ergos, excellent action, slicey blade, deep carry clip. They got rid of some of the extra screws since this is the Gen 2 model. I mean, you just can't go wrong with it. You really can't, especially if you're looking for a good American made knife with, with all the quality you want for the value you're getting for it. Very hard to beat very hard to beat. There are other knives that definitely give it a run for its money and can compete with the DECA, um, but it's very hard to beat the DECA, especially with that crossbar action. The Able Lock is just super, super awesome. So smooth. Um, this is a knife that has been in my pocket more than most knives this year, I will say. The DECA um, is an absolute winner. And uh, next up and last up, another one that I have not carried as much as I probably should. This is the Kaiser Sheepdog, and this is by far and away the best version of the Sheepdog there is. In terms of just the regular size, the flipper delete, cutout on the blade, some of the best ergos on a Kaiser or any EDC knife in general that I've ever handled. Nice contoured micarta. Um, got the lines in all the right places for two excellent grips. You can just give it your regular kind of hammer grip, put your thumb up on the spine and use all that jimping, or you can choke up and get a real close grip on that blade for any type of detail work. You probably won't be doing a whole lot of detail work with such a big wide blade like this, but it still feels excellent in hand and just provides a nice solid grip. And of course, the middle finger flicking action on this. It's about as good as it gets. For a knife this size, I don't think I've ever ever come across a knife better than this in terms of action in general, but also especially just middle finger flicking action. It's so, so stinking good. Um, truly addictive. 
phenomenal in general with just a pocket clip that this knife, for as wide as it is, when you close it and you put it in the pocket, it disappears with that clip. I mean, you're seeing that much of the knife at best. So it's basically gone. And it's a, it, it seems, due to how wide it is, it kind of seems like it's thinner than it maybe actually is. I think in terms of thickness, it's pretty average. But since it's so wide, it feels a little thinner. And it really does. I mean, it, it disappears pretty well in the pocket. Um, especially if you have, you know, just standard pockets or jeans or khakis or something. This just carries so well. Nice slicey blade with a thin edge around 16, 17 thousandths, that 154 cm steel. And just everything about it is just executed to perfection from Kaiser. This was one of the Kaisers that really, really, really grabbed my attention. And I thought, okay, Kaiser's starting something here. And this was last year, I believe, late last year when the, I believe this when, the, when this released. And it just grabbed the attention. And it seems like ever since then, uh, Kaiser has just taken off. And this was one of them that started it all. The Kaiser Sheepdog Flipper Delete cut out on the blade. If you have not experienced this knife for $79, you absolutely should. Because it is one of my favorite knives under $100 of all time. And it would be not only in the list, it'd be very high up the list. So there you go, guys. It barely fits in there. We'll snug it in right there. And there we go, guys. There's the lineup for this week. The Giant Mouse Bronze Biblio, the Wee Beacon, the Kaiser Towser K, the Hogue Decca, and the Kaiser Sheepdog. Let me know what you guys think. I really hope you enjoyed this one. As always, let me know what's in your pocket. Hope you guys have a great week. And until the next one, I'm out.